Hey guys, good Wednesday morning to you. We've got a really good couple reports coming to you today. One from Lake St. Clair, a nice perch bite going out right out of the DNR launch up there by uh, Fairhaven. And another one, thanks Adam Darris for that. Uh, and we've got a couple of good guest reports today. And then we slide over to Southwest Michigan, Northern Kent County, that greater Lowell area. And uh, Chris Brandt has been uh, doing a really good job ice fishing with his boys and with his friends up there in that general area of the woods and uh, really, really nice pike action. Uh, we'll explain exactly what he's doing. I loved what he was doing in this report because it gives you a couple of different ways to uh, keep yourself occupied. But stay tuned, two great reports, one from Lake St. Clair for Perch, the other one from Southwest Michigan, Northern Kent County, Pike. So guys, Adam Darris sent us a great guest report, and if you're remembering about these guest reports, you hear this, all you got to do is send me an email, john at fishermansdigest.com, and identify yourself, send a good, honest report that helps people catch fish. You don't have to send GPS coordinates. I don't need to know your exact spot. I do want to know generally where you're at, and also what your presentation are so people can get better at fishing. So Adam sent this awesome report three to 400 yards out of the Fairhaven DNR launch right there on Lake St. Clair. So this is not rocket science, guys. He said there was a whole group of shanties. He kind of moved off of them and was out in about eight foot of water. He had decent visibility and he was setting his rods and, and you know fishing for about an hour and all he could get was dinks. He made a change and that change turned into an awesome bunch. You'll see as these fish go across the screen, an awesome bunch of really nice perch. That was, is he put a Wonder Bread jig on and he went and put a whole minnow on it. And I'm telling you what, he said it was immediate. The big fish just came out of nowhere and started to engulf his full minnow head first right down the hatch. There was no question about it, it was fire. He said for about an hour and a half, the minute he switched from wax worms and a beaded spoon to a small jig with a minnow on it. And sometimes making an adjustment like that can be the ticket to having a great day on the water of better than average size fish and just sitting there sorting through dinks thinking that's all that's there. So there's a little tip from Adam to, and he's a veteran fisherman there, that you have to bring your box of tackle for a reason. You've gotta be willing to pull those little tabs and open the lid and tie something else on when it's not working for you. And so many times that's hard for some people. I know I'm a crankbait fisherman for walleye. Sometimes it seems like the hardest thing to just reel that line in and take that crankbait off and put something else completely on. I don't know why it's hard, but it is. I know I've gone through it, especially in tournaments. You get confidence in something that worked last week or the week before. And so you just keep doing it blindly. Sometimes you just gotta be willing to chuck it all and go do something different and it will pay dividends. So. Uh, if you're looking for great perch reports, uh, or not reports, great perch fishing, Adam says concentrate on the shallower waters from the, for the rest of the season. I mean, we're in March now, and uh, those fish are going to be in less than 10 feet of water, and they're going to be marauding along the shorelines. One of the biggest things you're looking for is clarity, obviously, meaning the water clarity, the ability for you to be able to track and see your jig. Uh, that's not absolutely imperative, but if it's hard for you to see your bait, it's also going to be harder for the fish to find it or for you to be able to see just the amount of activity. Uh, also, a good set of electronics, you know, is going to be really good. I use the uh, Garmin Live Scope, and that allows me to drop down and look all around me 100 feet to see if I've got activity in the area. That's really all I'm looking for when I'm using that Live Scope is I'm not fishing with it per se. I'm just saying, do I got activity around me? Is there fish around me? Now, I could use it to fish with, you know, watch the fish come right to my jig. But the big thing I've got is that ability to look from my little tiny hole this big of the lake and be able to see 100 foot all the way around me to know, hey, am I in a spot where I can expect schools to move through? That's really the biggest thing that that Garmin LiveScope system gives you, the confidence to stay put and try different things. So thanks, Adam, for a great guest report. If you're out there fishing and you want to submit a guest report, like I said, just shoot me an email with pictures and nice, honest report. We'll be glad to use it. Midwest Steel Carports is Michigan's premier steel building manufacturer. We manufacture and install custom steel buildings throughout Michigan. Our engineer certified steel buildings are fully tailored to fit your every need 
and our up to 40-year warranty protects your investment from residential storage sheds to commercial warehouses. Let our team work with you to find your ideal building. For more information and pricing, visit MidwestSteelCarports.com. So, hey, Chris Brant's another one of those guest reporters who sent us several reports throughout the year, and it wasn't just ice fishing reports. He sent us steelhead reports. I'm sure this summer Chris is going to, you know, send me some open water reports with he and his kid beating up on the fish somewhere. But, Chris, thank you very much for participating with us and helping people become better fishermen. Now, here's what Chris did up in the Lowell area, northern Kent County, that I thought was really, really a fun idea. And what he did was he set up a spearing shack with a great big hole cut to sit inside of uh, with a big decoy. And then he went outside of the spearing shack and went ahead and set up a spread of tip-ups for him and the two buddies he was with. And one guy basically, they, they took turns going in the shanty, two in, one out, manning the flags and checking the baits and just taking turns getting warm. Now, the decoy brought in some really nasty big northerns. The problem was is they were so aggressive that they'd be jigging the decoy and I mean nice northerns, 30 plus inches would come in and they would come in like a rocket, hit the decoy, but then never come back. And of course, when pike come into spearing shacks hard and heavy like that, you're not ready enough to really get a spear into them. So Chris said they never ever did end up spearing any, although they had several really big ones come in and crush the decoy and then just never come back. So that to me is just a total hoot. That's what I'd love to do. I love to have something that occupies my time. I know the last time I went spearing, I brought my jigging rod with me and I was catching perch and bluegill in the jig spearing hole. Now, quick tip from Chris, when you're setting up a jig spearing hole, he was in eight feet of water uh, he brought with him a bunch of eggshells that his wife saved th for him throughout the week in a bag and then he crushed them up and dropped them in the hole so he had a good splattering of white on the bottom right under his jig hole. If you get a little bit of dinge in the water, those eggshells can really help you pick out the body or the mass of a pike if he's coming in slow. Um, and it helps you be able to really put some perspective on exactly where he is to get the spear in him. Now, the real hot and heavy story here was the, the fish you're seeing caught is that the pike were coming through uh, on all the tip-ups. Anything from four o'clock on was fire. He said they had 12 flags. They caught seven very nice fish. So uh, it seemed like the afternoon from all the reports I've been getting here over the last couple of weeks, it seems like that afternoon bite has really been the key for walleye, for game fish, for pike and it seems like the panfish are biting better in the morning. So keep that in mind as you go forward through March. But Chris, thanks for a great report. Try that sometime. Set up yourself a spearing hole, put your tip-ups outside of it. Both things will keep you happy. Wyandotte Lure manufactures soft plastic baits and fishing tackle right here in the Detroit area. Our famous original Wyandotte Worm and the new Motor City Minnow are made with our own special blend of material that is soft enough for a fish to bite, but durable enough to use all day. Our baits are available in over 30 different fish catching colors. Just another reason why Wyandotte Lure is known as the king of the river. Go to WyandotteLure.com or ask for them at your local bait and tackle store. So another couple great reports. Uh, like I say, we're here in front of the custom rack at Domka Outdoors. Uh, tomorrow, Thursday, we're gonna talk about Monroe open water preview. Uh, we're gonna talk about Domka's custom crank line and all the great fish that people are about to start catching here because guess what? Spring is on the way. Four days this week in the 40s to 50 degrees. We can't wait and we're hoping to be on the water already next week. But hey, stay tuned for tomorrow's report where we talk about a really good ice fishing destination and then some open water fishing here at Monroe.